was once a dream is fast becoming a reality. The long-awaited metro rail is on track and headed for Los Angeles. When it arrives not long from now, metro rail will prove to be the vital link to providing a much needed balanced transportation system for the area. A total system that complements our comprehensive network of buses and freeways and one that will foster the growth, vitality, and economic development of this international metropolis, Los Angeles. This is the largest public works project and program in the nation. We're going to reduce pollution. We're going to move the city forward. Started the process to obtain $1.2 billion for the phase two to extend the subway. I know we've got a few folks here from Century City to get all the way to Century City. So today we're off to La Cienega, then we're at Century City, and we're not going to rest till we get to Zev's alma mater at UCLA. Steve Olson, UCLA. We are so excited about the subway coming here to the west side. UCLA hardly endorses it. For the traffic congestion, right? And the parking and the environment. Everyone's going to benefit from the subway. Por ejemplo, teníamos a una marqueta a aquel lado y se llamaba Rancho Market. Entonces todos los residentes de aquí sufrimos mucho con esa quitada de marqueta. A este lado enfrente teníamos una lavandería que también se perdió. Se ha perdido también dos líneas de base, que era el 30 y el 31, que nos llevaban a, hasta de aquí, de la Plaza del Mariachi hasta la Rowan y la César Chávez, en donde teníamos marquetas, que era el superior, el super, y todo ha cambiado. Entonces, el otro, el otro bar nos llevaba de aquí hasta la Atlantic, a donde está el colegio. Entonces, ahora con la llegada del metro, todo eso se, hemos perdido. En ese tiempo perdimos 300 apartamentos aquí alrededor de bajos recursos. Entonces, estamos trabajando como comunidad y con la comunidad de ILA para ver si podemos rescatar un poquito de lo que hemos perdido. En aquel terreno ya hay una contratación como ¿Sí? o algo, pero ¿y qué van a hacer? Ya hay un, nego un arreglo una negociación. entre Metro y una organización. Ajá, y entonces van a ser apartamentos de bajos recursos. Entonces, pues hemos ganado algunas luchas, pero todavía nos falta mucho y seguiremos luchando pues, para ver qué más conseguimos, ¿verdad? Y yo creo que unidos lograremos mucho. After the gold line was extended here into Bull Heights and there were new train stations in Bull Heights, there were also empty lots left behind that Metro used during construction as staging sites for offices or materials, things of that sort. Once again, it was they were done constructing, they just left them empty. So they've been empty for about seven years now. Um, so the Metro campaign has evolved into advocating um, for the community uh, and making sure that whatever gets built on these lots is a benefit of the community. A lot of people in this community don't travel by train. Um, and before the gold line and the train came into Boyle Heights, folks in this community were already dependent on transit. Um, they were dependent on buses, on their bus lines. <laughs> cerca el, el tren más nomás, pero es que tengo que ir el tren no va para donde yo voy um, I don't have enough money for a car right now so I'm saving up for one so that's why I take the bus no, I think I use the bus more because there's more options to getting around um, the train there's only a few lines si, sí, lo tomo para ir a mi consulta médica y para ir a la escuela de entrenamiento para los deshabilitados. Si sí tomo el tren de vez en cuando. Uh, las dos cosas las tomo como 50% cada, cada uno. Ya dejé de trabajar 
Ya, ya, ya estoy retirado. No voy en el, en el metro así, cuando voy retirado así a pasearme. ¿Verdad? No como a Pasadena. Sí. I take the bus because I mean it's I guess easier than like putting gas in the car. Well, it's easier for me just to take the bus. By my house. Tengo una rodilla lastimada y no puedo manejar. Tengo poco haciendo esto, pero me enseño, no hay de otra. No, pues según combinado, pues es que por ejemplo cuando voy aquí al mercadito, uso el bus y luego el tren. Okay. Es más rápido, mucho más rápido el tren, pero no va a todas partes. Es la cosa. I had a car, but they took it away because I can't see very good no more. I can't drive, but I, I think because I have to numbers. I don't have any way of getting around. Because I, never, I don't use a train, so I don't go far out. I just around here. Is it local? Local. I don't go far out, so I don't use a train. Actually, I never used it. Oh, no más el bus. Yo no más uso el bus. El tren no tengo necesidad. Porque no tengo a dónde ir en el tren. Nada más. Ni el tren, por ejemplo, yo vivo acá. Para tomar el bus tengo que ir hasta allá la primera. Digo el tren. Entonces, pues, para nada. Me sale peor. Uh -huh. Para caminar pues, cinco cuadras para tomar el, el tren. Pues, no. Estamos reuniendo cada mes para hablar de estas cosas. También cada vez que, por ejemplo, nuestros comunidades seamos los primeros en beneficiarnos, porque a veces hay gente de otras comunidades que se benefician más que nosotros mismos en beneficiarnos. Ah, exactamente. Es, again, the goal for us. We want direction from you guys so that so that our team can go back and we can refine the plan better and then bring it back to you again in the next meeting and and get to a place where we know exactly what we're going to be demanding and who we're going to be and who can give it to us. Yes. If we can get LA Metro on our side, for instance, they're going to have Proposition R2 coming. And the last time there was nothing on affordable homes and rents. That's but right. we get them on our side to say, what are you going to do for us to support that? Because it's going to be 45 years of money coming in. And what are you going to do as a whole community? And we're not going to support it unless there are affordable homes for our people. So back in 2008, they passed Measure R1. It's a countywide half cent sales tax. All that money goes into building out new rail projects for Metro. But what has happened is that the, you know, a large majority of the money goes right back into spending money to build new highways, right? Nothing to do with public transit. Um, a lot of that money goes straight into these big billion dollar rail projects that are completely behind schedule. And all those contractors make a killing, right? On these rail contracts. And, and then Metro goes around and they say, you know what, we gotta increase our fares because we have this huge deficit. And so guess what, low income folks, you guys gotta pay out a little bit more. And there's a small group of people that are benefiting from the sales tax and they're trying to go back and say, we need another measure R to make sure our vision's realized. So that's gonna be R2. And so it's, a, it's something that we should tread carefully in, you know, because we had a lot, I think a lot of our community uh, supporters, a lot of our allied organizations didn't agree on whether to support it or not, because some groups were like, no, we need more public transit, which is true. But then other groups were like, yeah, but where's that money gonna go? You know, is it actually gonna go to like increasing and maintaining the bus system, which is the most used system in LA? Right? It's also the cheapest to operate. So there's like all of these big questions around equity and where that money's going. Unfortunately, in Metro's policy and procedures, there isn't strong language around community engagement or affordable housing um, or community assets in general that were taken away during construction. Housing in the country and especially here in LA is ridiculous. Like we have a housing crisis. It's extremely expensive. Um, and a lot of folks are having like a hard time, you know, finding places to live or are overcrowded in small apartments or in houses um, in order to be able to make rent. Well, since you're a homeowner and you're, re you're living here in your own house, um, why is it so important for you to have affordable housing in your community? Um, because a lot of people can afford rent here. Like right now, my sister Lily, she, she's right now with my sister Judy and in her house and she's waiting for an apartment in Wyvernwood. But um, I was riding my bicycle earlier 
I got an, an application right here from the Boyle Heights Hotel, and hopefully she filled she filled it out and took it. Okay. Even though she has to be in the waiting list. I know a person that lives there. Her name is Fanny. Um, before she moved to the Boyle Heights Hotel, she was homeless and she didn't have her kids with her. And when she got the apartment, she fought back her kids. She got her kids back. Buenas tardes. Uh, como saben, mi nombre es Fanny Ortiz. En alto, Fanny, con pasión. Soy residente de Boyle Heights y soy miembro de ELAC. Yo soy inquilina de vivienda económica de bajos recursos. Gracias a la vivienda económica de bajos recursos, yo, madre soltera, uh, puedo sostener a mis cinco hijos, incluyendo a mi niña de ocho años que tiene necesidades especiales. Gracias a la vivienda económica de bajos recursos que ILAC ha desarrollado, desarrollado cerca del transporte público, mis hijos pueden independientemente llegar a su escuela. Yo tengo accesibilidad para trabajar, ir a la escuela y ser activa con mi comunidad. Gracias a la vivienda económica, dejamos de ser una familia sin hogar. Mi historia es una de muchas, pero cuando se comparte mi historia se convierte en transformadora. Yo creo que personalmente todo ser humano tiene derecho de vivir con dignidad. Um, Heights, the moment is mostly, you know, Mexican community, Mexican American community. Um, and Boyle Heights has a history of a resistance and fight, you know, even with like student walkouts um, and a lot of organizing around education. Um, it's definitely a special place. Um, and it's a, a place where you have a lot of pride when it comes to its culture. Mariachi Plaza has the only kiosk in the country that um, reflects or is similar to the ones in Jalisco. Mexico and the mariachi community is very proud of that. Um, you have all these old Victorian homes all over the place and you have these awesome Mexican-American families living in them. So it's kind of this, you know, this thing that's not supposed to happen, this thing that you don't um, expect. Um, but it's, it's very awesome and it's changing. Um, but the folks that are here definitely are willing to stand up and fight, you know, for their community. Um, and they they know each other. There's a lot of community. They're very involved. Um, so it's very special in that way. Um, and um, Boyle Heights is Boyle Heights because of you know the folks that have shaped it um, and have given it its cultural and historical significance. Um, so that's the community. And if those people cannot live you know in their home, if those people have to go somewhere far away then what do you really have?